we'll play code names a lot if if people are on Patreon and uh, y- you see you see a post for my board game night. Um, we often play this game code names. It's a word association game. You give a one word clue to cover as many of these twenty five cards that are laid out in front of everybody. The clue giver sees what cards are your teams, and the clue guessers have to guess what cards are are their team's cards based on the clue giver's clue. And some people, so you go like um, sky for three because three of the words are associated with sky in some way. You're hoping that they make the same association you did. And once in a while, someone will be like, K for th- for four because four of their words start with the letter K, and it specifically says in the rule books you can't say stuff like that. But it's not a rule that I even have to tell people because it's a good. If you say some shit like that, it's like oh, I just don't like you. Yeah, like, that's a good. <laughs> or if you made test. up a word and combined all the four <laughs> words into one. Yeah, just play the fucking game the way that it's meant to be played. Everyone will have a lot more fun, I assure you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Instead of trying to win at this. Um, But yeah, that's a funny, that's a funny thing. I hope we make a board game one day. Uh, It's it's a weird thing that I'm, uh, it's it's like I don't know where to start and I'm intimidated by the prospect of it, but my uh, my buddy Grant Lyon, who I introduced to board games, he made he his never own... even played Monopoly. Well, in his adult life, oh okay, he had never played a board game since he was a kid, and um, he made this party game. I actually haven't played it because it came out just before COVID, which is a rough time to have a party game. Yeah, come out. Kiss the Grant, the party game. <laughs> <laughs> give mouth to mouth <laughs> to people is the game that i invented right before covid respiratory system twister <laughs> and uh it's a game called curmudgeon well i i have no idea how successful it was because of covid or whatever but it's it's impressive looking i still haven't played it and he has a, he has another one almost done and then he has another one that he's pitching to like a big board game manufacturer and he has a board game podcast now and all these uh all these things and I'm like hmm <laughs> how hard is it to actually make a game you've made apps app games and yeah stuff, but that's right? solo um making a a two or more player game that's balanced and that can't be uh, exploited easily or get tired of easily that seems like a challenge except for if you were to just use another mechanic as a template and just like tweak it which most people probably do that rather than Mm. start from zero but i don't know well yeah yeah you you just kind of combine the mechanics that you like from other games and combine them in a novel way and um yeah starting from zero is impossible like you need to have some sort of ambition or like oh i'm inspired by this uh this river journey we took when we were riding on tubes and wouldn't it be fun to capture riding tubes on the river in a board game form or some like stupid story like that then it would be easy but if you're just sitting in a blank room and it's like how do we have fun using cards dice and a rule book yeah Mm. (laughs) yeah i uh well this is um even though we weren't planning this this is coming out we decided to put this out early in december since it's just all of december is kind of the holiday season and there's other holidays outside of christmas in particular and i actually I've, I'm trying to get more people into board gaming generally. I love it so much because it's, uh, especially if, um, uh, like if you don't drink, which I do, but if you don't drink, it's hard to find it, especially at certain ages, it's hard to find a way to get people to get together. That isn't just, let's go to a bar or whatever. 
And it's what I really like about board gaming is it's a way to, um, I, I, like the dead air in a normal conversation isn't dead air if you're playing a board game. So if you're yeah. playing a board game, you can stop and break off into a conversation whenever anyone has something interesting to say or whatever. Oh, it's my turn? Oh, sorry. I was just crazy about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to you don't ever have to like feel the need to force conversation when you're playing board games yeah you, know, you can just concentrate on the game and so i think they're awesome gifts for people i think they're making a huge um comeback in terms of in terms of actual adults playing them um and so they're it, they're good gifts so I was wondering what's a what's a couple of your favorite board games? Code Especially names, for like code beginners. words, pictures, resistance. Haven't played Risk in a while, but I want to throw Risk up there. Mm, Risk is good. Risk Ink, is good. I Ink and Gold. In um, Istanbul. Uh oh, I've got some beard in my mouth, but this will just make for more <laughs> interesting conversation because I'll have to articulate words using a different. Uh, you know, strategy than I normally do. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> it's not a coming different out. Different strategy. I gotta just swallow the cotton and just get over it. <laughs> uh, let's see. What did I name? I named Resistance. I named uh, Code Name Pictures. Anomia is fun. It's a I've card. Never played Anomia. Um. I'm not Code gonna say chess. Are- chess is like too too big and too. Of a chess isn't even a board game. Chess is chess. Chess is chess, and it's it's just one on one as well, which is fine. If like, if I like stuff uh, that's skill based and easy to learn, and it's okay if there's a little luck involved. But if it's just a dice rolling game, that gets boring pretty quickly. So a lot of our favorites, or maybe not favorites, but the ones we knew in the '80s and '90s, like Game of Life, uh, Story uh trouble uh sorry the american version of the canadian one sorry sorry yeah (laughs) other than that those ones are mainly just you pop the pop-o-matic trouble or you roll the dice and that's that's it you can't really employ some strategy but yeah stratego codenames almost is almost no luck whatsoever i mean there's a little bit of luck involved here and there but uh because you can get you can have a lucky guess that wasn't what your um clue giver intended you to guess yeah but there's uh but it's it's the rules are really simple and it's a very cerebral game i know uh, comics always like it because comics like word association stuff and have kind of a, a they just take to it pretty easily yeah your personality then, can shine through and you can also use it to say what you know about other people's personality like the hints you give will speak something to what you know about them or what shared information you think you have yeah you can get to know people a little bit it's an easy entry point i've played i've played with like um like young cousins of mine that are like you know i, I think as young as uh, like 10 years old and I've played with like my grandma who I don't think has ever learned a new game in her <laughs> adult life. And, and I've, I've played with board game geeks. I've played with people that haven't played board games ever. And it just, it seems so universally appealing. That's why I always played at board game night, but I really like, I like, uh, the game pandemic not just because we're in one i loved it beforehand because there's a bunch of good expansions for it if you dig it and although it is a bit difficult to learn if you're on your own as long as one person knows how to play it's a cooperative game so they can help everyone else play until everyone is up to speed, which generally just takes like one game and you have a and you have a sense of it. Yeah, but lot, so many cooperative in, games, though. it's like yeah. But if if you but if, with a cooperative game, you get like a whole spiel of what all the rules are, and then you're just kind of okay. I guess I'll play this card, and no one can really help you. 
um, or a competitive game, but a cooperative game. Everyone can help one another. I like that. Um, I like small games that travel easy. Hanabi is another comp- uh, cooperative Hanabi's game. Hanabi's fun. One on one, one on one on one co op or more. Yeah, or more. And uh, it's I I have almost lost two friends over and <laughs> over that's and the Hobby. best part about board games is not the cards or the colors or the winning or the bonding it's going at it and almost <laughs> ruining friendships and the people that can separate your board game personality from your real life personality they're solid but you shouldn't take it outside of the you know outside the mat yeah keep yeah, it on the mat sure. in the, yeah, keep Hinabi. it in the ring keep it on the court you you have everyone can see your cards but you and they're trying to clue you in to what your cards are and everyone's trying to clue each other into what their cards are and you got to like remember the clues and remember what cl- cards they were for and and then there's there's things that you can in- imply that have like higher levels of sophistication but but the logic will make sense. So people should be able to make an inference about what cards they have based on a clue, but it's not necessarily obvious. And it can be so frustrating yeah. <laughs> sometimes. It's one of those, it's the uh it's the curse of knowledge. The the bias of the curse of knowledge really you know. comes out. You know it's obvious to you. <laughs> and like, how doesn't this person understand? It's my dignity, clue? Luann. Don't you recognize <laughs> dignity when you see it? Yeah, it's like charades with uh or pictionary. I wonder what the categories are. I'm sure there's a a really helpful infographic showing what the categories of all games are. So you've got like your charades, Pictionary, trying to communicate knowledge with limited bandwidth type of game. Mm. Uh, You've got your hidden role game where you're the secret Hitler, the secret werewolf, the secret murderer, the secret something where you know you're bad, but nobody knows who the bad one is. And then you're trying to sneak in yeah and then you've got like conquer all using the money system and trading sort of stuff there's there's so many fun categories and some people think of board games as like i don't like dice i don't want a card i don't want a little car where i collect children like that's stupid (laughs) i want to want to just stand by the fence and drink beers and complain about my wife (laughs) 